Number 10, Draculina. To be clear, when we talk about heroes you've never heard of, we're more talking about those that sit on the outskirts of the superhero fandoms. So you won't find them likely on the big screen or on DC's or Marvel's main teams like the Justice League, Avengers, or the X-Men. Instead, these are heroes who come from a more humble background by comparison. Some of them may have been simply forgotten due to just how long they've been around, whereas others typically are associated with smaller or even in some cases now defined defunct publishers. Coming from the world of fellow indie hero Vampirella, Draculina is sort of Ella's adopted sister and also kind of her ex-lover or ex one night stand. There have actually been at least two different Draculinas, possibly three at this point. One is Lilith's biological daughter and the biological twin sister of Vampy who is blonde. The other one, the one I'm focusing on, who was once Vampy's lover, became obsessed with her and was eventually adopted by Lilith to become the new Draculina. If you want to learn more about her and other Vampy Jason characters, Sacred Six is a pretty cool comic that I would recommend that you check out. Or you can learn more about this version of Draculina in the 2019 Vampirella series from Dynamite. Both of those series, by the way, are by Christopher Priest. Both Draculinas go by the name Victory, although the one we're talking about here was originally named Victoria, but the two do differ in terms of appearance and, like I said, blood relation. <laughs> blood relation in this context almost becomes a vampire pun. This new Draculina isn't exactly a vampire, by the way, but is armed with a demonic ring that basically grants her power power similar to one, allowing her to accurately play the part. Draculina is currently a property of Dynamite Comics. Number 9, Tony Chu. Tony Chu is a quirky and unique character, but still is ultimately a hero. And he even technically a superpower, so he would qualify as a superhero. Tony is a detective who possesses the unique power of Sebopathy. Whatever he eats, except for beets, he gains in depth knowledge of. Being able to tell where all the ingredients that make it up came from, being able to taste everything about that ingested food. Tony uses this skill to basically solve murders mainly, sometimes even ingesting parts of victims or the accused, sometimes even ingesting parts of the victims or the suspects to learn more about the case and help solve it. He initially worked for the Philadelphia Police Department, but ultimately gets fired after they witness him eating part of a deceased suspect. He later is hired by the FDA. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, there are actually a lot more indie superheroes that I would love to tell you about as we dive into the world of unknown supers. So if you want to learn more, be sure to let us know by commenting below and giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Red Sonja. One of my favorite favorite lesser known heroes is Red Sonja. Red Sonja comes to us from the less sci-fi, more fantasy based world of sword and sorcery. She is an extremely gifted fighter, marksman, and sword bearer. Red Sonja, the she-devil, is said to have been given her name for, well, many different reasons. One such story as to how she got her name is that she left to seek out adventure and her fortune and became a mercenary, earning the name Red because of all the blood that she spilled. Red Sonja, while not a traditional hero, pretty much always stands up to those who are cruel and corrupt, often fighting for those who are oppressed, even against her better judgement. She has even fought death before in combat and won, allowing her to live on when she was on the brink of death. Red Sonja was once a character from the Marvel Comics wheelhouse, but currently calls Dynamite Comics her home. Number 7, Gold Lantern. In the current time, as in right now, as in modern time, the Green Lantern Corps is just one of many cores that each stand for a different color on the emotional spectrum. But the Legion of Superheroes is from the 31st century, and as such, there is a bit of a difference to the course of old. Kala Lore was a blind Filipino school teacher in the 31st century when the elders of Oa, the future guardians of the universe, offered him a gold lantern ring, combining the different colors of the spectrum, but not like the White Lantern. The Elders offered Kala as their ambassador in the Legion of Superheroes, but surprise, Brainiac 5 revealed that the Elders of Oa are not actually the guardians of the universe, and there is some sinister thing going on with them, so that's not confusing at all. Similar to the members of the other Colored Lantern cores, Gold Lantern has the power to create physical constructs with his ring. These constructs are powered by sheer force of will and limited only by Kala's imagination. The ring's power creates a sort of force field around him, protecting him from all but the strongest attacks. Kala's ring also allows him to fly at incredible speeds, which makes his legion flight ring more of like a status symbol than anything else. Number 6, Phantom Girl. Tinya or Tanya Wazo possesses the ability to shift partially to the extra dimensional phantom zone, allowing her to phase through solid matter and become intangible, meaning she cannot be harmed by conventional means of attack. This is a power that's common to all natives of Big Ziddle, but it also enables her to access the Phantom Zone and use it to travel to Earth, which is not
not an ability shared by the rest of her race. Another thing that makes her unique to her race is the ease with which she can make only part of her body intangible. Additionally, in newer continuity, she can use the halo over her head as a portal and transport something or someone, including herself, from one location to another. She is much cooler than I am making her sound. I promise you, just check her out. Number five, Ruby Thursday. Ruby Thursday is a super weird villain who I still can't even really believe to this day actually exists. But she does. I believe she was kind of designed as a character on a dare, but don't quote me on that story as it's just something I remember reading somewhere. I didn't have time to go back and double check all that, but I'm pretty sure her creation story is something like someone dared someone to create a thing. It's a good story if you want to go check it out. Her creation is credited to Steve Gerber and Sal Buscema. And she first appeared in Defenders issue 32 in the 70s. Her whole thing is that she is a sexy villain lady, but in the place of where her head should be, she instead has a big red ball that is made up of organic circuitry and thereby gives her powers while also acting as a stand-in head because you still need the head to do things so yeah <laughs> Number four, Spook. A villain I love to talk about, but whom no one really seems to remember, apparently. Val Caliban was a master escape artist who first appeared in Detective Comics back in the 70s. He was initially caught and long thought to be dead after being executed, or at least we thought he was executed, appearing in an almost ghost-inspired robe of a costume. In reality, Caliban had survived using his skills of hypnosis and escapism. He was also privy to the architectural plans of the prison as he'd worked to help design it. Thereby, he was able to exploit that knowledge and use it to escape. Honestly, it was it was pretty silly of them to try to put him in a prison that he'd designed, in my opinion. Years later, though, he wouldn't be so lucky when changes had been made to its design and he ended up back in the prison again. And he'd be even more unlucky when he ran into Damian Wayne. It's Damian Wayne. Number three, Gaggy. Gaggy was the sidekick of Joker. Before there was Harley Quinn, there was Gaggy. Although to be clear, Joker and Gaggy were not in a romantic relationship. Just thought I'd point that out. They were simply partners in crime. In fact, when Harley did start coming around, it was later revealed that Gaggy actually became jealous of her, and even that she was perhaps the reason for Gaggy's fall from glory in the Joker's eyes. At least that was how Gaggy saw it. He basically blamed Harley for all of it. More recently, Gaggy made a reappearance in the Batman 3 Jokers limited series, but Sadly, he was killed off in that book, being eaten by a joker shark. R.I.P. Gaggy. I love how Gaggy came back and then they were like, he's dead. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Bye. Number two, Tattered Damalion. Tattered Damalion is by all accounts a pretty weird and obscure villain who at one point was stopped by Dazzler. He doesn't really have any powers but instead has some kind of forgotten skills, possibly. He started out initially as a tap dancer who found fame in the movies with his dancing partner Julia Walker. Knowing eventually his star would dim, he invested money in a casino in Las Vegas but later, after he retired to run it, was swindled out of his investment and money by criminals. Following that, he became a derelict and ended up allied with the committee. He eventually would become the crazed criminal Tattered Damalion, who sought to destroy money and material possessions as a means of revenge for what had unfairly happened to him. Honestly, it seems pretty fair of him to go that route. Eventually, Daz stopped him and helped to reunite him with his former dance partner, Julia Walker. But eventually, she would grow tired of looking after him. <laughs> Which also, fair. Number one, Snowflame. Snowflame was originally a villain that first appeared in the 80s in DC Comics, making his first appearance in New Guardians issue number two, and coincidentally, his last appearance as well. In the New Earth continuity, anyways. Snowflame's powers are fueled by drugs, which grant him superhuman speed, strength, pyrokinesis, and made him numb to pain. He could also infect other people, intoxicating them merely by touching them. And guess what? There's more. It gets better. In 2020, he actually made a return in the Prime Earth continuity appearing in the 2018 Catwoman series in issue number 23. So while he still remains obscure, he's also kind of recently renew as well. Yay. Number 10, Karate Kid. While Val Armour, Karate Kid, does not have any powers of his own, he makes up for that fact by being the absolute best martial artist in the known universe. And I ain't even kidding. He has learned a form of super karate that has allowed him to stand one on one against Superboy during his audition to be part of the Legion. When Val was still young and an orphan, Japan's greatest warrior took him in. Sensei Toshiaki taught Val multiple different martial arts. 
Under this training, Val was able to become the youngest warrior to ever earn the title of samurai. Learning all he could from Earth, Val set off into space to find new martial arts to learn and master. With this mastery over so many different forms of martial arts, Karate Kid is absolutely one of the most powerful Legion of Superheroes members, even without powers of his own. Before we carry on, there are tons of members of the Legion of Superheroes with all kinds of powers. So my question for you today is, who in your opinion is the most underrated member of the Legion and do you think they will make this list? Answer in the comments and we'll carry on. Number 9. Sensor Girl Projectra Windsor is a princess on the very medieval planet Orondo. But the title of Princess Projectra just ain't cool enough for her. So instead, she goes by the much cooler name of Sensor Girl which is the name she's had since joining up with the Legion in 1966. But why is she one of the most powerful members of the Legion? Well, Sensor Girl's powers allow her to cast illusions, but the illusions are so gosh darn realistic that the one who is being illusioned, for lack of a better term, cannot tell the difference. With time, this has basically become a form of controlling senses, or even shutting off someone's senses altogether. It may not seem like an incredibly powerful offensive ability, but when Nemesis Kid of the Legion of supervillains took the life of Karate Kid, Sensor Girl's husband, she was able to use her powers and skill to defeat Nemesis Kid. She's also incredibly fast and can take on most characters in hand to hand combat thanks to her training with Karate Kid. She's even gone on to lead the team back before it was rebooted post Zero Hour. Number 8 Chameleon Boy Chameleon Boy, the son of RJ Brand, the founder of the Legion of Superheroes, is a shapeshifter just like all those of Durlin descent. Durlin's can shapeshift at any time for any length of time with basically no limitation on the size or shape thanks to the fact that they have near total control over their molecular biology. It basically means that they have no specific chosen form except for what they choose for themselves, which by the 30th century was an orange humanoid with large eyes and two antennae on their heads. This makes Chameleon Boy or Reap Daggle, which is the best name ever, able to do a lot. He can perform biofit to create multiples of himself in biofusion with others of his race and can even use this to turn into an actual functioning spaceship. Meaning that this species can create electricity, thrust, and oxygenated air supply which by default means they can manipulate the elements. Members of this race can even reconstitute themselves from even a liquid form. They also automatically absorb complete details of any person, creature, or things structure down to poor differences so that they can duplicate it perfectly whenever they wish. Chameleon Boy is nuts. Number 7 Crazy Quilt Crazy Quilt actually might sound familiar to you in terms of his overall personality and demeanor, as it seems like the version of Polka Dot Man that we saw in the Suicide Squad, to me at least, is actually closer to a combination of the original Polka Dot Man mixed with, well, this villain, Crazy Quilt. Crazy Quilt was Paul Decker, a painter and criminal who left clues in his artwork as to his criminal plots. Eventually, Eventually, he was apprehended, left blinded by a gunshot wound in the scuffle. He would regain his sight through an experimental procedure where his optic nerves were attached to a helmet, but the blinding colors that he would see would cause him to go insane. At least when I was watching The Suicide Squad, I was like, this polka dot man kind of reminds me of polka dot man mixed with crazy quilts, because he's so crazy. Number 6 Unis the Untouchable Another villain who almost foiled the X-Men in their early days was Unis. Unis the Untouchable was a mutant who couldn't be touched by those who would do harm to him, making him seemingly invincible when he first came up against the X-Men in issue 8. His power was also weirdly specific as it didn't repel all things from him and mainly seemed to target those who fought against him and projectiles that would do him harm. Beast was the one to help defeat him when he learned of his true nature in a wrestling match against him. This was during a brief moment when Hank McCoy left the team. When Unis turned to a life of crime, Beast was the one to stop him by creating a device that intensified his power, causing everything to be repelled from Unis, including food. Starving, Unis eventually agreed to stay on the straight and narrow, and Beast returned his power levels to how they once were, allowing Unis to return to his wrestling career. Number 5 Lightning Lass Including Lightning Lass on this list feels a little bit like cheating since 
Well, we had Lightning Lad on the last list, and she is just his twin who received powers at the exact same time and in the same way. Born on Winath, she gained electric powers through exposure to a lightning beast. But I suppose, unlike her brother, she did also use the alias Light Lass when she gained the power to alter the pull of gravity. At that time, according to Brainiac 5, Light Lass and Starboy were two of the most powerful sentient beings in the universe because of their ability to manipulate gravity. Gravity, the dominant force in the universe for sharpening large scale structure of stars and galaxies. But that was on Prime Earth, so it's not always the case. But she does have the powers of Lightning Lad on a lower level, which gains her a good spot on this list. Number four, Sunboy. The Earthling Dirk Morgana, who becomes Sunboy, was thrown into an atomic reactor for interrupting an experiment, causing an explosion. Yes, I know it's kind of harsh, but luckily this did not kill Dirk. Instead, it revealed that he is a meta human human with a one in a million genetic structure that allowed the radiation to be absorbed into his body and gave him the power to generate heat and light. Sunboy can internally generate an almost limitless supply of solar energy from the smallest candle flicker to around the energy of the sun. So yeah, that's a lot of freaking power. Thankfully, he is also completely immune to heat and solar radiation, so he can survive his own powers, which is always a plus. Interestingly though, his power to radiate light and heat can be reflected back on him by mirrors, jewels, and even creatures that possess reflective physical characteristics, which is a sucky weakness, but hey, we've all got them, you know. Number three, wildfire. One day while studying at the University of Metropolis' research center, Drake Burroughs was caught in a laboratory explosion that completely destroyed his body. For reasons unknown, his consciousness survived, and the atoms of his body reconstituted themselves as pure antimatter. A scientist named Professor Voltan created a specifically designed suit to contain Drake's energy form. This suit enabled Drake the ability to channel a wide variety of new energy-based powers through that suit. These abilities include space travel, energy slash anti-energy blasts, super strength and superhuman speed, the ability to change his size and density, and manipulate chemical reactions with his most unique ability being the ability to create a massive anti-energy blast. It's also hinted that he is basically immortal as he is a constantly recharging source of energy with no end in sight. He is among the Legion's top four most powerful heroes. Not on this list, I mean in, in the world. Number two, Starboy. Thom Kalor, or Tom Kalor if you prefer, was born on an observatory satellite orbiting the planet Xanthu. He originally gained Kryptonian level powers like those of Superman when he was caught in the tail of a comet. But in time, those faded away, leaving only the superhuman ability to temporarily increase or decrease the mass of an object or sometimes person up to the mass of a star. So he basically makes things heavy, but so heavy in fact that he can take a simple object and turn it into a black hole. It is worth noting that the black hole is apparently dependent upon his powers to remain active, but it's a freaking black hole that this guy can just create. Starboy can seem to use these black holes as wormholes to alternate realities of the multiverse, so that's a pretty useful ability, but black holes are terrifying, and personally, I'd rather just take the multiversal taxi. That's uh, just me though. Starboy eventually becomes adrift in time and space, eventually becoming Starman in Kingdom Come, and then moving back to the early 21st century and joining the Justice Society of America, which all had a bit of a deteriorating effect on his sanity, so mm, pros and cons. And in at number one is Element Lad. Jan Ara, aka Element Lad, is the last survivor of the planet Trom. The rest of his race was wiped out by Roxas the space pirate and his crew when they refused to transmute common elements into rare metals and jewels. Jan had only survived this genocide because he had been in space at the time. He served with the Legion for many, many years, serving terms as leader and deputy leader. Like all the other Tromites, which no longer exist, Jan has the ability to transmute substances on the atomic level, which is an incredibly strong ability in comics if you did not know. As an example of what he could 
potentially do, the element lad of Earth 247 had also learned how to change his own chemical makeup, which allowed him to live over billions of years. And over time, he learned to use his abilities to actually create or destroy life and make himself near omnipotent. He is a crazy powerful character. Number 10 is Bouncing Boy. YouTube commenter Dracone was the inspiration for this one. He reminded us that during a time when the Legion of Superheroes was without a leader and was holding a voting poll to decide who would lead, Bouncing Boy managed to take over as a temporary leader before the votes were cast and did such a good job as an in interim leader, he was actually voted in as the official leader despite never actually being listed on the official ballots. And honestly, Chuck Tane's ability may seem kind of silly, but the power to inflate himself and bounce around like a giant ball gives him a combination of invulnerability and velocity that actually makes him a surprisingly useful combatant. And speaking of combat, he actually has a high level of tactical skill and knowledge. Now his name is Silly and the other members wanted to give him a cooler name, but for Chuck, it's all about that bounce, baby. Number nine, Timberwolf. He was born on the planet Zune, where his father Marlondo experimented on him. This gave him enhanced werewolf-like abilities, including strength levels several times that of a normal human, enhanced reflexes and agility, making him a fearsome physical opponent in battle, with his enhanced reflexes additionally granting the ability to run much faster than a normal human being. Timberwolf also has sharpened claws on each hand. He's very much like other werewolf-like comic books characters, but as part of the Legion, he is in space and has all the benefits that come with Legion membership. But he is also prone to a little bit of beastal savagery. Just a little bit. Number 8, Triplicate Girl. Lawornu Durgo is a Kargite from the planet Karg, which is a planet that has three suns. For some reason, these three suns allowed its Kargite inhabitants the ability to split themselves into three identical bodies, each with their own thoughts and personalities, and whose memories are absorbed into the original Kargite when absorbed back together. Lawornu left her home to try out for the Legion on Earth, and she demonstrated her power to the Legion's three founders at the same time, simultaneously, which I'm sure was very impressive. Unfortunately, after the death of one of her duplicates at the hand of Computo, she could only split into two bodies, but eventually she got upgrades. Now she has the power to split herself into an apparently endless number of identical bodies, no matter where she is. It is not yet known if there is any upper limit to her duplication ability, so she could literally just be duplicating all the time, which is weird. Number 7, Vampirella, but you can call her Vampy. Vampirella isn't a conventional hero by any means, but she definitely tries to do what's best by folks while still being a vampire from outer space, and at the same time with ties to Lilith and Hell. Overall, she's both complicated and also kinda super simple, and it's that weird blend of those two very different elements that I love about her. Vampy being an intergalactic vampire is super strong, fast, can fly because she actually has wings, and also has been shown to have access to advanced technology at times due to her ties to the planet Draculon. Vampirella is currently attached to Dynamite Comics, but was originally a property of Warren Publishing. Number 6, Savage Dragon. Savage Dragon is a popular hero as far as the lesser known or indie heroes go, so if you haven't heard of him before, you might want to check him out. Initially, his origins were a mystery. All we knew was that he was a humanoid, green skinned, dragon like character who decided to fight as a police officer and hero, fighting against the criminal and mutant super freaks of Chicago. That's also in part because Savage Dragon initially had really bad amnesia in the comics, so he didn't actually even remember his own origin story at the time. Savage Dragon hails from Image Comics and was a originally introduced as simply Dragon before being known under the mantle of Savage Dragon. His powers include super strength and super healing. Number 5, Lightning Lad. Born on the planet Winath, Guardy Rands, known as Lightning Lad and sometimes Livewire, was forced to land on the planet Korball with his two siblings. Figuring the only way to restore power to their ship was to use the electrical energy of the native electrical beasts, the three attempted to siphon those beasts' power. Unfortunately, or actually fortunately if you want to look at it that way, the act backfired and left the three with superpowers. Guardy and his sister became heroes while their older brother became a lightning themed villain. While Lightning Lad is very centered around the whole lightning thing, his power is actually to manipulate energy, which he usually manifests in the form of blue electricity and lightning bolts. He can use these to shock and disable enemies. So it's not just shocking people though, and powering things. He can manipulate energy and generate it, and also possesses some limited weapons 
weather controlling powers. And he can move at superhuman speed thanks to his ability to channel electricity through his body which supercharges it. He ain't no chump. Number 4 Cosmic Boy Cosmic Boy whose real name is Rock Crin was one of the founding members of the Legion and also the groups original leader. As such you'd expect him to be pretty powerful. And he is. Cosmic Boy possesses the power of metal manipulation similar to Marvel's Magneto but actually a bit more powerful. Cosmic Boy can repel, attract and wholly manipulate objects containing any form of metal. He has shown an ability to pull large satellites down from orbit and he can magnetize objects to make them stick to other similar objects. He can also fly, create force fields, project concussive blasts and absorb energy using this ability. Coming from his home planet of Brawl, Rock is an incredible natural leader and it's probably his greatest strength, even above the magnetism powers. After arriving on Earth, he, Garth Rands and Irma Ardeen successfully stopped the de-lifing of the well known billionaire RJ Brand who brought the three together to start the Legion. Number 3 Mon El Mon El Largand or Valor is from the planet Daxum which is actually one of the planets that orbited the same star as Krypton did. Originally Daxum was settled by Kryptonian colonists but over an incredibly long time these Kryptonians evolved separately and gained some uniqueness. Although on Honestly, not a lot. Mon El and any member of his species who finds themselves in the light of a yellow sun has superhuman abilities somewhat similar to those of a Kryptonian. So yes, just like Superman, he has superhuman strength, invulnerability, super speed, flight, heat vision and freeze breath and can use extrasensory powers like x-ray vision. But unlike Superman, he is only weak to lead, not kryptonite and violently irreversibly weak to it. Luckily for him though, the Legion has an anti lead serum thingy so he is basically Superman without any main weaknesses unless he doesn't take the serum. Number 2 Superboy Superboy was always closely associated with the legion of superheroes being one of the inspirations for the team but he wasn't from the 30th century like the legion is. For that reason most of the early stories featuring the group had Superboy either travel to the 30th century or legion members dropping in on the 20th century. In terms of power he's easily one of the most powerful of the group because well as most of you might know the the original Superboy was basically just a teenage Superman, but later versions of Superboy are more like the genetic clone of both Lex Luthor and Superman. So due to that, he has the majority of Superman's power when he was a teenager mixed with the intelligence of Luthor, which is one hell of a dangerous combo. And then there is Jonathan Kent who is literally just Superman's son. So any which one you want to choose, Superboy is a powerhouse. And in at number one is Saturn Girl. Saturn Girl, otherwise known as Imra Ardeen, comes from the moon of Saturn. Saturn. Titan. Like all of those great people who come from Titan, in DC Comics specifically, Saturn Girl is inherently gifted with telepathy. But unlike other Titanites, Saturn Girl is extremely proficient with it. Like really proficient. So much so that among the various DC characters that possess telepathy, Saturn Girl is arguably the strongest of them all. There is almost no defense to Saturn Girl's telepathic attacks which makes her arguably the most powerful member of the team. While other characters have more physical abilities or control over forms of matter, it doesn't mean much when Saturn Girl can defeat you with a look like she did to both Ultra Boy and Mon El once. She rendered both men unconscious with a simple look. She has been on every version of the team and there's an excellent reason for that. Other than being one of the three founding members, she is just too powerful to exclude. Number 10 Trapster Oddly enough, although Trapster is a super weird and relatively obscure villain, he's still somehow made his way into a surprising number of comics. I mean, he has been around since the 60s, so considering that I guess not so many, but we're still talking over a hundred issues at least, which is pretty weird considering who Trapster is. Trapster is weird because because well he was originally known as the guy who came armed with a glue gun or a paste gun if you will. Initially he was known by the supervillain named Paste Pot Pete. However Trapster has since come to loathe that name and much prefers to be called Trapster instead as he feels the former name makes him sound lame and is often used out of disrespect for him. Admittedly he is kind of lame though. Sorry Trapster you might be a genius but you still fight with glue. So anyone that fights with a glue gun I'm just saying. 
Although I will say if it was a hot glue gun, glue gun burns do hurt a lot. Number 9. Polka Dot Man You might think you know Polka Dot Man, but do you really know him? If you've seen the Suicide Squad, you are familiar with a version of Abner Krill, but the original Polka Dot Man, also Abner Krill of the New Earth continuity, was a little bit different when it came to his power set, at least initially. Initially when Polka Dot Man or Mr. Polka Dot first appeared, he came armed with multiple different weapons which all came from the Polka Dots on his suit. He could pull them off and basically turn them into any means of different weapons and devices, even once turning one into a getaway vehicle. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to talk more weird, obscure things from comics with me, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. This list actually has everything that I love. Weird, obscure, and villains. I love all of those things. Number 8. Vanisher Vanisher was actually one of the first villains that the X-Men came up against way back in X-Men issue number 2. In short, he was weird because he gave the X-Men so much trouble, especially considering Marvel Girl was on the team and he was only a teleporter. Though at this time they'd never encountered a teleporter before and were fairly new heroes. Also Jean likely unknowingly had mental blocks in place. Vanisher's demise was also quite dark and odd when Professor X, who had left the X-Men to fight alone initially as a test, finally came to their aid and easily defeated Vanisher by making him forget who he was. Which honestly is a pretty horrifying punishment. Don't worry though, that wouldn't be the end of Vanisher and he'd also end up getting a much less extravagant costume. Which actually is kinda sad, I do like his original costume, with its like, whole, its whole thing. It's very red and patterned. Number 7. Ultra Boy This one is interesting, as you'd be totally forgiven for actually laughing at this character, but then you'd have to say sorry as you just insulted an incredibly powerful dude. Ultra Boy, or Joe Na, possesses many of the same powers as Superboy, including superhuman speed, strength, flight, stamina, breath, vision, and invulnerability, which he gained from being swallowed by an energy beast, which is essentially a giant space whale, hence the biblical Jonah name. The only the only issue with Jonah, and it's a big one, is that he can only use one power at a time. This means that if he wants to fly through space at super speed, he must wear a space suit to survive in the cold vacuum. Or when using his power for super strength, he is not invulnerable and then therefore can get tired feel muscular pain, or even pull a muscle. Joe Na can switch these abilities almost instantly, but needs to make the conscious choice to do so, which honestly sounds kind of exhausting to me. Despite his limitation, he often works with Mon L and Superboy as the Legion's big three powerhouses, and even led the team at one point. Number 6. Brainiac 5 Brainiac? On a hero team? Yes, I know, but there are or were numerous versions of the character Brainiac in DC continuity. This one from the 30th century, known as Brainiac 5, is actually a descendant of Brainiac 2, cloned from the original and one of the biggest threats Superman has ever faced. Brainiac 5, or Quirrell Dox from the planet Kolu, is hyper aware of his lineage, and as such, he has made many efforts to set himself apart, making him one of the funniest and most caring members of the team while also being one of the most powerful. Other than being a capable shapeshifter, his power lies mostly in his intellect. Everything that makes him powerful comes from his mind thanks to having 12th level intelligence. He has a level of genius which has no comparison to anything on earth, which is considered to be a 6th level intellect in its entirety. So essentially, Brainiac is twice as intelligent as the population of earth, which I mean, have you been outside and talked to another human recently? We aren't that impressive. Number 5. Witchblade. Witchblade is a hero who comes from Top Cow Productions. Mainly we've known Witchblade as Sarah Pizzini, but the Witchblade has belonged to many other powerful women throughout the years. The Witchblade is an ancient mystical artifact that typically binds itself to a host who can then wield and use its powers at will. It can be more or less powerful depending on the host, but in this case since Sarah is one of the most well known hosts of the Witchblade, we're gonna basically base the ranking on her abilities. The Witchblade can be used to summon mystical armor, which can cover the entirety of its host's body, though typically most are not skilled enough to actually summon that much armor and instead are usually only covered in little pieces of armor as a result. Hence why you see that witch blade art and she's like, not really covered in much. This armor grants the wearer invulnerability, but even if its host is harmed, it also grants the power to heal. Aside from creating armor, the witch blade can also be used to create weapons on the fly. It also increases its host's strength and endurance. Sarah herself was also a trained NYPD detective prior to becoming the host for the witch blade 
Blade, so she also brings her skills as an officer and detective to the table. Number 4 Luther Strode Luther Strode is the main character in the Strange Talent of Luther Strode series, a series that hails from Image Comics. Luther ends up acquiring powers that enhance his strength through ability, speed, and combat skills after receiving a mail order exercise program known as the Hercules Method. Luther's powers, however, only create more harm than good in his life and lead to a lot of death, much of it happening as a result of his own involvement. Try as he might to try and do good with it. While not a conventional hero, Luther definitely fits the bill of an anti hero or more accurately, tragic hero archetype, with everything going awry, no matter his intent. He's also someone I would personally love to see take on the hero who made our number two spot. Number three, Radiant Black. Radiant Black is Nathan Burnett, or was Nathan Burnett. Nathan to start, anyways. Going to try not to spoil this series because it's one that I think we should all be reading, so I'm just gonna leave it at Nathan for now. Radiant Black is the first hero we meet in this series. In issue number one, Nathan ends up getting the powers of the Black Radiant, which basically means he has the powers of a black hole. Radiant Black can manipulate gravity and also becomes super dense with this power set. The downside for this hero is being new it means that he's pretty inexperienced in the comics thus far. However, gravity manipulation manipulation as a power set is insane, which is how he ranks so high up on this list despite his inexperience. Radiant Black hails from Image Comics, and like I said, if you have not checked out this series and gotten to know the Radiance yet, well, you definitely need to change that and you need to do so. It's like Power Rangers, but possibly cooler, and I say that having much respect and much love for Power Rangers. So that's not a snub at all, it's just like, it's really good. Number 2 Bulletproof You know Invincible, but do you know Bulletproof? Fans of the comic series likely do, but if you just became an Invincible fan via the animated series, then this isn't a character that you'd be familiar with just yet. After all, at this point we've only had one season so far, so it's very likely Bulletproof will appear in the series just not until a bit later on. Bulletproof is Zandel Rudolph. He got his powers as a result of his brother using him as basically a science experiment, as his brother Tyrone was actually obsessed with superpowers. Zandel would end up getting powers as a result of this mad science, while his brother would end up dead. Bulletproof also goes on to take up the invincible mantle at one point, filling in for Mark when he is off world. Zandel's powers are based on energy absorption, which I think is one of the strongest power sets to have personally. Bulletproof, like other heroes in the invincible universe comes to us from Skybound, which is an imprint of Image Comics. Number 1 The Darkness The Darkness is an ancient elemental force that takes up residence in a host, granting them special powers. One of the most famous hosts that we have come to know as the Darkness is Jackie Estacado. The powers that Jackie wields are similar to what you'd expect from some kind of demonic force. They are also honestly comparable to Venom's power set from Marvel Comics, at least I see a lot of similarities there. The Darkness gives you access to a sort of mystical armor which can be summoned at will. It also grants the user a healing factor, shapeshift abilities, and through them also the ability to fly via wings that you can create. Jackie as the darkness can also create dark tendrils which he can also turn into weapons, and he can also summon entities known as darklings. While more of an anti-hero due to his methods, Jackie Estacado is still a hero in the sense that he generally fights on the side of good. The darkness hails from Top Cow Productions. And if you do know the Witchblade, you probably know the darkness, or vice versa.